สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So as many of you know that I am currently pregnant, and many of you has actually asked me whether there's a dish in Thai culture that either expecting or new mothers are encouraged to eat. I know such a dish such a dish exists in many many different cultures, and yes, it does in Thai culture too. So that is what I'm going to show you today. It's a dish called Gang Liang. So Gang means curry. Liang doesn't mean anything. It's just, it's just the name of this curry. And even though it is technically a curry, it's more like a soup. It's very light and brothy and peppery. Tons of vegetables in it, and it's believed to help with the production of breast milk. Whether or not it actually does, I don't know. But hey, it's delicious either way, so why not, right? And don't worry, even if you're not an expecting mother, you can still have this dish. It's not embarrassing for a man to be ordering this dish. It's just you know something that we eat more of when we're expecting a baby. So let's get started. So let's start with the curry paste, which is so simple. So you're probably not gonna be able to find it at the stores. Most people make it at home. It's super simple. A dried shrimp, okay, which I'm going to blitz in my coffee grinder, just because it's faster. Old school, they would just pound this in a mortar and pestle. Ta-da! Yeah, and you just want to get it nice and fluffy like that. That's all you need. Now I'm going to transfer everything into my mortar and pestle. So this is probably the most important ingredient of all, and that is white pepper. So this curry, it is spicy, but from pepper rather than from chilies, and that hot peppery heat is sort of unique to Gang Liang. So I've got quite a bit of white pepper here. You can add more, but if you're not used to eating a really peppery soup, you might find it a bit overwhelming. So just kind of adjust as you go. Start with less. There you go, and you want it nice and fine, just like that. I'm also gonna add one Thai chili because chilies and pepper give very different kinds of spiciness. You don't have to add the chili, but hey, why not? This baby's got to learn to eat spicy food. There you go. Doesn't have to be super fine. This next ingredient is an herb that's very unique to the flavor of Gang Liang, but it might be hard for you to find. So this is something we call Gra Chai. Or finger root in English, and it's a rhizome. So think a cousin of like the turmeric or ginger. It grows underground. It has a very sort of cooling, almost a little medicinal flavor. Really nice in this dish. I've just chopped it up here. Now this, the one that I am using, is not fresh. It's not something that's easy to find fresh at all. But if you have a nice Asian grocery store, you might be able to find ones that come in a brine solution like this, which works. Really, really well. If you don't have it, there really isn't another ingredient that tastes similar to ka chai. But if you want to substitute ginger instead, I'm sure this would still be a really delicious curry. It'll be a different flavor, obviously. But ginger is also believed to help with that breast milk production, so you're st we're still on track there. Okay, so nice fine paste there, and then finally shallots. Lots of chopped shallots here, and yes, you can put everything in the blender. It's totally fine. I just feel like going a little old school today. And as you go, you might find it gets a little wet and splashy. You can just add a little bit of the dry shrimp to help add friction. But once you've got it down to a relatively fine paste, the rest of the dry shrimp can go in, and also. Because we don't have enough shrimp in here, some fermented shrimp paste. So this is what we call kapi. Just a little bit will add nice umami flavor. And you're just pounding to mix, and the paste is done. So let's talk vegetables. So this soup is known for being full of vegetables, and half of them are actually different kinds of squashes. So let's take a look at them. So I've got here kabocha squash. Rich, creamy, sweet flesh. You really want some sort of a creamy squash for this. If you can't find kabocha, which by the way you don't have to peel, the peel is completely edible. Just substitute whatever winter squash you can find that's sweet and creamy. We've got this interesting looking guy over here. So this is angled lufa, or in Thai we call this buap. You might see it labeled at the store as singgua. And when you cook it, it becomes really soft and almost spongy, and it absorbs sauce or Broth, whatever it's sitting in, so well. I love it so much. So this is what it looks like when you cut it and peel it. You definitely want to peel it. 
I'm also using chayote squash. So chayote squash is not something we typically add in gangliang, but in Thailand we use a different kind of gourd called bottled gourd or calabash. Can't find that here, but I think chayote squash makes a great sub for that. And, and I just wanted to show you that I found this guy at the store. I think this is technically called a kusa squash. It's kind of like a zucchini and I've tried it in this curry, works really well. So if you can't find all these squashes, if you just have one winter squash and one summer squash, you're good to go. Now, the non-squash vegetables, I've got some oyster mushrooms. You don't have to do oyster mushrooms, but you want to use some sort of Asian mushrooms. Do not use the button mushrooms. Trust me, it is not going to be good in this. Finally, baby corn. So if you have fresh baby corn, definitely get those. I can't find fresh baby corn, I can only find canned, which I don't actually love in this dish. So I'm just showing you that it's something you can add. I'm not going to actually add it. So I've got some unsalted homemade chicken stock here. You can use shrimp stock as well that you make using shrimp shells and heads that'll work really well for this. So simple, I'm gonna add all of my curry paste in here. Bring that to a boil to allow all of those herbs to infuse its flavor into the broth. So my broth has been simmering for a few minutes. I'm gonna add now some fish sauce to season. And I always like to season before I add my vegetables so my vegetables can cook in that seasoning and has more flavor that way. I'm gonna add first my kabocha squash. And kabocha squash don't take as long to cook as you might think. Six, seven minutes is all it takes. And I find that if I let this cook for two minutes and then I add everything else, it all comes out exactly right. So it's been two minutes, then the rest of my vegetables will go in. My squash, angled loofah, also known as angled gourd, and the mushrooms. By the way, these I just found at the store, they're called black oyster mushrooms. So they look a little different from your typical oyster mushrooms, but taste more or less the same. Now, all you gotta do is let these cook until all the vegetables are done and your gangliang is like basically done. That's how easy this is, which is perfect because when you're a new mother, you don't have time to be <laughs> cooking something for a long time, right? All right, so a few more minutes have passed and the first thing you want to check is the doneness of your squash. So take the biggest piece, pierce it with a fork and it should go through pretty easily. So now protein. I'm going to add some shrimp, which is typical and classic but you can do chicken, definitely. I got ginormous shrimp today. And the shrimp are only going to take literally 30 seconds to cook. Look at that, so colorful, so healthy. I feel like I'm gonna lactate just looking at it. I'm gonna turn this off now. Finally, this is the one thing that I cannot find. So typically we use bai meng lak, or lemon basil to add to gangliang. I can't find that here. So I like to just add Thai basil, which actually worked really well. It's a beautiful flavor. I kind of actually prefer it to adding bai meng lak, but um, I should mention that because if you do have access to Thai lemon basil, do add it so you can really experience what the authentic flavor of gangliang is like. Oh my gosh, look at that. I will give it a taste. Mmm! Perfect. Oh, and by the way, for our Patreon members, for the bonus show after the show, this episode, I'm going to share with you another quick little recipe that you can make using your leftover squash, because you're probably going to have a bit of leftover squash after this. If you want to know more about joining us on Patreon, I'll put the link in the description box below. So as some of you may know, in Thailand, we eat family style. So this would typically not be the only thing you're eating. There are probably a few other dishes that are served with rice. But if I'm just by myself and I'm eating, the only thing that I'm eating is this. What I like to do is make a little uh, rice soup bowl. So I'm just going to ladle this right onto my rice. Yes. Make sure you get a little bit of everything. And kabocha squash is my favorite thing in this entire bowl, so I want to make sure I get some of that. Mm. Oh, 
What a unique flavor. If you've never had Gang Liang, this is really something unlike any other dish that I can think of in Thai cuisine. It's light and brothy, but at the same time, it's got that pepperiness from the white pepper that we added, so it's hot. It, it like warms your throat. It's the perfect thing to eat in the winter. And in fact, in Thailand, this dish, people like to serve it in the winter, even though Thai winter isn't <laughs> exactly that cold, but you know, it's still a warming, comforting thing to serve that squash is creamy and sweet, which balances out the other lighter vegetables really well. Oh, such, a, such a good oh, soul warming dish to have, whether or not you're having a baby. So I hope you give this recipe a try. The full written recipe will be on hotthaikitchen.com. And when you make it, I definitely want to see it. So send it to me on Facebook. Twitter or Instagram. And if in your culture there is a dish that, you know, uh, that pregnant or expecting women are encouraged to eat, share with us in the comments below. I'd love to know all about that. If you haven't subscribed to the show, make sure that you do so you don't miss an episode and click the bell icon as well so you get a notification when I post a new video. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal. <laughs> so according to Adam, he thinks that gachai smells like ginger that's been rubbed with tiger balm. Not a bad, not a bad description there. <laughs> <laughs>